Hi everyone, I'm Sandy Lene. Welcome to Psychic Creations. We have a very, very interesting show for you today. We are going to be taking a class at Kim Van Zyl's Zentangle. It is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for joining in. Well, welcome, ladies. This is like a first, being able to start the class at 5 after 11. I'm like so impressed with you all. Yeah, so that's where we get our pleasure, is teaching this to others. My, the beginning class is probably my still my favorite class to teach, because I love to see people experience that aha moment, especially the skeptics that think they can't. You're crazy, Kim. I won't be able to do this, but I'll give it a shot. And by the end of the class, they're just like blown away. And that's what Rick and Maria wanted, was something that was so simple and structured um, that anyone could do. And like I say, I've taught seven-year-olds to 90-year-olds and people with tremors and, you know, um, special needs, mental health issues, pain management. Um, and so it's truly been a gift to the world. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to touch on one more thing here. I came across this when I was looking for another one of my documents to update. And this is from a CZT, your name is Sandy Hunter. Because once you start doing this, if you truly fall in love with it like I do, then you'll probably go online, you'll probably join a couple's untangle groups, there's a lot out there now, and you can almost get too overwhelmed. And I don't want that to happen. Um, it's really easy to start collecting the tangle patterns that we're going to learn. And fill up a huge, I have a huge binder this thick, haven't opened it up in probably a year. I mean, you know, it's, um, it's not about that. It's about the process and how you feel during it. But the outcome is beautiful. So you're still producing beautiful art, but it's basically about the process. And she just words it really good in here because she, you start to um, come across some of these blogs and these statements and there's always the negative people out there unfortunately and they're like well that's just doodling how can you trademark doodling you know that's been around since the hieroglyphics true patterns and that kind of drawing but what Rick and Maria came up with was um, the, the process and the ceremony of it so um, this thing that um, Sandy wrote was, um, she starts it out with, I don't really care what the rules of Zentangle are. I'm not a rule follower. It's my art and I'll do what I want. That's like a quote from one of the haters, one of the negative people. Fine, do what you want. Um, she's like, I see this subject kicked around on Zentangle fan forums from time to time. I don't normally engage because I don't really feel like handing angry people a stick to beat me with. But it's hard for me to see something so inherently good and useful be misunderstood, so I want to try to explain it. So this is her point of view, which is just right on. Um, there's books and Pinterest and YouTube videos are all wonderful sources for patterns, but all of those words are used interchangeably, like doodling, tangling, pattern, line weaving. And that's where the conflict arises. The confusion seems to come from the fact that the people were refer to any intricate piece of line art as Zentangle, because they think that's just the latest buzzword for that thing I was already doing years ago in the margins of my notebooks. Okay, we can all relate to that. It is possible to place identical drawings side by side where one is a doodle and the other is a Zentangle. And the reason that's possible is because the art itself does not make a drawing a Zentangle. The art is the byproduct of the complete mental immersion in the process of tangling. It all depends on where your mind is when you do it. If you're in this for the art, these guidelines don't matter one iota. Doodle, draw, sketch away. But if you're craving a temporary effective escape plan from pain, grief, or stress, or you just need a mental break, read on because this information just might come in handy one day. So yes, the rumors are true. There are guidelines, they're, but they're just roads to a destination with Zentangle. And they don't exist to crush your spirit. Think of them as stout little pillars that work together to support a single purpose, to refocus the mind. 
Zentangle is mindful. Every guideline exists to make that complete mental immersion possible and to su sustain it. That's no easy task in a fast-paced culture with constant barrage of distractions like ours. So I thought that was very cool. And it just kind of like lays the groundwork of what you're going to learn today. Guidelines with the circles and the um, sacred geometry. And then you've got triangles and squares. And yeah, we've got some hanging up here on the banners. And uh, it looks very difficult and it's much easier to do than what it looks. And we'll talk about um, the string part that makes that up and makes it easier. Is that all freehand? Because that's yes. very, it's very symmetrical. These are these are freehand. Oh, those? That I don't know. Those aren't mine. But, 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 but yours your, are? Your this tiles got, ha, have strings on them. The symbolas yes. do have strings. So it's yes. not, the geometry is already put on these. Uh -huh. And right. then you can fill them in with your patterns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to go over what a string means and all that. Sorry. And then they started um, different sizes of paper. This is called an ATC, stands for Artist Trading Card. So kind of like the baseball cards that the boys have, well, we have our own trading cards too. <laughs> Frame them. I have like some um, clear uh, cool. like mm -hmm. envelopes, like real heavy-duty vinyl. But um, people have binders, like the baseball card collection, and you can put them all in the little envelopes. So um, just another fun size. And then um, Bijou came along. There was one that's framed somewhere. Thank you. Well, yeah, I gave you Bijous in your um, bag. And on the back of this, you'll see it's called a Bijou tile, and it has a little snail. And he has become our little mascot for Zentangle. And as the story goes, on one of their return trips from Paris, a snail had kind of gotten his way into Maria's luggage. So when they got back to the States and opened up, there's this lovely little snail. Well, they set him free in their garden. And as snails do, they leave a little sparkly trail behind where they go. So they're like, wow, he's making his own Zentang. You know, <laughs> oh, so um, they kind of went on and on with this concept. So uh, your other handout here is um let me you can follow along their job and another one here <laughs> sorry I keep taking your supplies <laughs> all right so with with bijou becoming our little mascot he's also our reminder of um what zane tangle is all about um i myself start to go get going a little bit fast so it's like okay slow it down let's um, especially when I start making my circles, I get a little tail at the top. So um, on this handout I gave you, he's just got the little reminders to breathe, slow down, be deliberate in your strokes, and that is the um, slogan that is all about Zentangle. Anything is possible one stroke at a time. That's all you have to think about. Don't think about anything else um, because it all develops on its own. Uh, Step back and admire your art along the way, not just at the end, and we'll do that once we get going. Recognize new opportunities, and you might just change direction. And Jennifer touched on that. There are no mistakes in Zentangle. So anyone that's a little OCD, got little issues with that? <laughs> um, you know, if you're trying to do a pattern, and you're trying to do it just right, and you're trying so hard, and the harder you try normally is when you might make your little goof. And when I first learned my very first one, I gave myself a migraine. Because <laughs> I, was, I was just, and I wanted to learn this so I didn't have headaches. Yeah. But I was so intent on getting it just right, and then it was like, crap. And I was like, well, no one's around me. They won't know if I erase this. But I was intent, so I'm like, oh, I can't erase. Oh, well. And you know, since then, like five years later, I don't even think about it. I mean, I make mistakes all the time teaching. I was like, oh, well, whoops. Because you can make it into something else, so it's just a different opportunity. We use Sakura Micron pens when Maria was thinking about what type of supplies to use for this art method. She wanted good quality materials for um, I'll get your pencil for um, a fair price, okay? And with her history and experience, she's she's. She's tried every pen in the universe and always came back to Sakura. It's a brand out of Japan. Um, this is called the Micron. It's archival ink. It's waterproof. It's fade proof. Museum quality ink. So your little works of beautiful art will last forever. Um, if you want to open up your cap, 
It's a very, very small little nib on the end there. Uh, this is an 01. There is actually a smaller one, a point like 005 or um, but the 01 is pretty universal. You can do just about anything with this size. Um, it's a hollow tube of ink in here, so it's going to flow through that. Do not press down really hard because you can kind of squish that nib. In fact, with this paper, just a light touch and it'll just flow right on the surface. Okay. If you're holding your pen too hard, after a while your hand is going to get a little achy. So that's a reminder that okay, I need to loosen my grip a little bit, yet yeah, you don't have to. Um, when you're not using it, cap it because that little nib will dry out and then it's sometimes difficult to get it going mm -hmm. again. I did learn recently, um, if you have any leakage, once in a while we have a problem because of the altitude. It's been shipped from Massachusetts and because this is like this free-flowing ink. But they've got it designed with this little chamber in the cap and then around there. So what they, because we just threw away like four at my last class. They replaced them for me, but they're like, did did you save them? I'm like, no. But I guess you can wipe it all out in there and um, it'll be pretty good afterwards. So so that's with the pen. They do come in larger sizes, an 03, an 05, an 08. And it's kind of nice to add on those big sizes after a while, just if you're doing a lot of fill-in work. But it can be done with the 01. You've got a little pencil there. No eraser on the end because there's no mistakes and zentangles. You don't need an eraser. So, and then this is your tortillon, which is a little blending tool. Um, it's basically just rolled up paper, really hard, and it's got a point. You're, you're going to use the side of it a lot. And same thing with the pencil. We're not going to shade with the point down or blend with the point down. So you'll be using the sides of that. And that'll be your little friend. <laughs> and that's about it, right? We covered everything in your bag? Okay. Yeah, with me stumbling upon it, I just really like some of her verbiage. Um, so first, we're going to do a little dot in each corner, really lightly. Your pencil, I'm making my little darker so you guys can see it. But your pencil work is just going to kind of disappear in the background of your art. It's to give you the foundation and kind of the guidelines to get started, okay? And then we're going to connect those dots with a border and don't be worried about straight lines. We don't want them straight. We don't use rulers. We don't use um, pro protractors or it's all just free and loose. No worries. And then we're going to make the string. And the string line is merely a suggestion, a place to begin. Um, like I said, it will disappear because you're drawing it lightly. Um, some people have never faced a blank piece of paper, and so it's intimidating. It can be overwhelming. So this is just a neat little three-step ceremony to kind of get you going. Um, and of course, you can divide this paper up in thousands of different ways. I like to start out with what we call a Z-string. Um, it gives us four sections, and uh, just really, and I use this string all the time because each outcome is so different. So you're just going to draw. Can you see me okay, Chantel? Yeah. Draw a light pencil back. Because it's the glare on this side. How's that? Is that better? Okay. okay. And then we're going to come down and then just across again. So it's kind of like a sideways Z, or if you're looking at it this way, it might look like an N. And that's going to give us one, two, three, four sections. And we're going to fill up those sections with what we call tangles. Each tangle has a name. Some, some of them I know the history behind, others I don't have a clue how they got their name. Um, and you don't have to be stressed about remembering all this or taking notes. I should have said that in the beginning, hopefully no one's been doing that. I'm going to send you home with a handout of all the tangles that you've learned today, a step out on how to do them, okay? Because I don't want you to worry about writing anything down. So we're done with our pencil for the moment. And now your little tile's not blank anymore.
Fluorite, also known as fluor spar, is a mineral composed of calcium fluoride. It is an isometric mineral with a cubic habit. Crystal twining is common and adds complexity to the observed crystal habits. Fluorite can occur in a vein deposit, especially with metallic minerals. It is a common mineral in deposits of hydrothermal origin and has been noted as a primary mineral in granites and other igneous rocks and the common minor constitute of dolostone and limestone. Fluorite gives its name to the property of fluorescence as many specimens fluoresce strongly in ultraviolet light. The fluorescence may be due to impurities such as yttrium or organic matter in the crystal lattice. Fluorite's fluorescent color is largely dependent on where the original specimen was located. Blue is the most common color, but red, purple, yellow, green, brown, black, and clear also occur. Fluorite also exhibits the property of thermoluminescence. Fluorite can be found in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, England, Norway, Mexico, and Ontario, Canada. Also in Missouri, Oklahoma, Illinois, Kentucky, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Ohio, New Hampshire, and New York in the United States. The metaphysical properties of fluorite are, they are powerful mental healers. They are labeled as the genius stone. Fluorite allows increased abilities of concentration and they influence the activities that occur on the mental plane of consciousness. Fluorite amplifies, focuses, expands, and creates new pathways for the mind. It also connects a person's being on the mental and spiritual plane. Fluorite brings forth discernment of truth and clear decision making. It eases meditation. It is a sleep aid as well as bringing forth prophetic dreams. Chakra healers associate fluorite primarily with the third or the brow chakra. Fluorite frees one from bad habits. Blue fluorite brings forth inner peace. Purple focuses and helps one out of a mental rut and is also a powerful regenerator. It is used to treat arthritis and protects one from infection by purification of the body by eliminating almost any virus or bacteria. It balances the hormones and it is believed to bring forth healthy bones and teeth. Yellow fluorite is for comprehension and group communications and dynamics. The clear fluorite creates pathways between the individual and universal spirit. Green fluorite is an auric cleanser and can still the heart and mind. Those specializing in healing pets recommend fluorite for the teeth, ears, nose, and throat, and also for aid in digestion, respiratory, lymph nodes, and for bones, and sleep, and for anxiousness. Fluorite in today's uses are for ornamental carvings and it is used as a flux in a manufacture of steel, in the making of opalescent glass, enamels for cooking utensils, and for hydrofluoric acid. And some use fluorite in high performance telescopes and camera lenses. Fluorite is associated with February as its birthstone. To find further information on stones, my book, Sandy Psychic Stones, 50 Stones for Divination, Spiritual Awareness, and Healing, offers all sorts of information and anecdotes. You can find this book on my website, which is www.sandypsychicstones.com.
ovaline mineral is a magnesium iron silicate in which the ratio of magnesium and iron varies between the two end members of the series for stearite and phaolite. Olivine occurs in both mafic and ultramafic igneous rocks and as a primary mineral in certain metamorphic rocks. It is one of the most common minerals on Earth and has also been identified on the Moon and in meteorites. And as new evidence appears on Mars, there is a suggestion that this mineral has also been found there. Ovaline's crystal habits include flattened, tabular, to box shaped crystals. Ovaline is known by many names. It is known as chrysolite, evening emerald, and peridot. Ovaline in lore. Ovaline is among the oldest known gemstones. Ancient Egyptians around 1580 BC to 1350 BC created beads from ovaline. For Greeks and Romans, olivine was popular to use for intaglios, rings, inlays, and pendants. Olivines were a prized gem late in the Ottoman Empire. Turkish sultans collected what is believed to be the world's largest collection. The gold throne in Istanbul's Top Copy Museum is decorated with 955 olivine capuchons, up to one inch across, and there are also ovalines used as turban ornaments and on jeweled boxes. The largest stone is believed to be a 310 carat gem that belongs to the Smithsonian. A 192 carat stone of fine, clear, olive green olivine is part of the Russian crown jewels in the Kremlin. The metaphysical uses of ovaline are it can help us connect to our destiny and attain spiritual truth, it serves as a protection against nervousness, it alleviates spiritual fear, it calms anger and it allows for our problems to just dissolve. It boosts confidence and assertive energy. It is helpful to rise the kundalini. It brings the wearer good luck, peace, and success. It attracts love. It also dispels negative emotions. An ovaline is used to help dreams become reality. It also attracts wealth and peridot aids in healing hurt feelings. The physical uses of ovaline are it is used to relieve toxins and bring them to the surface to get rid of them. It causes the parathyroid glands to be of a more balanced nature. If you set ovaline under your pillow it aids in better sleep. It is said to benefit the stomach and digestive tract organs and to stimulate tissue regeneration. Olivine increases strength and physical vitality. It helps in liver and adrenal functions and is also thought to protect the lungs and sinuses from illness. And it protects your wrists from injury. Mm -hmm.